From the Opopco Studios in Oklahoma City, you're watching The Press Row. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell, and we are brought to you by Papa John's Pizza. You can go online anytime and order your pizza at papajohns.com. Time for our five and five segment. We've got five topics, about a minute each for those five minutes. Let's start with football. I mean, obviously, it's February. We're going to be talking about football. OU defensive line and co-defensive coordinator Jerry Montgomery leaving for the NFL is? Discouraging. Uh, you know, the Sooners uh, had a disappointing year, went through staff changes, rebuilt the staff, and really, in a lot of ways, uh, Jerry Montgomery and, and Cale Gundy became the shining lights of this staff uh, in terms of holdovers. And then all of a sudden, the Green Bay Packers whisk away Jerry Montgomery, who was uh, clearly billed as the, uh, as the recruiting star on, on that defensive side of the ball. And now he's gone. Uh, Mike Stoops is, uh, has been shifted to a different position. Uh, he's still the coordinator, but it's, it's a staff that's really in flux, and it's, it's lost uh, a lot of its leadership, and it's lost a lot of its young blood in terms of Jerry Montgomery being such an impact recruiter. So yeah. very discouraging news for Bob Stoops. Yeah, I would say uh, Montgomery leaving for the NFL is not good, and maybe not good especially for Mike Stoops. I mean, uh, I, I liked the idea of having that co-defensive coordinator uh, role for Jerry Montgomery, you know, I'm under no illusions that, uh, you know, Mike was still going to be calling a lot of the shots, but Jerry Montgomery as a young uh, and seemingly very successful, effective coach, I thought he could be a good voice to go along with Mike Stoops. And now you've got to think that OU is going to go out and hire a new defensive line coach who's probably not going to have that co-defensive uh, uh, title. So I would say Mike Stoops goes back to being the full-fledged defensive coordinator. So I just I think that that had a potential to be a really good deal, uh, really to help Mike Stoops, and now OU obviously looking again for, for another coach there. All right, Barry, what about this? Finish this sentence. OSU football being in ESPN's early college football playoff projections is? Well, I think it's a great boost to the, to a, uh, to the end of the season, uh, sort of caps the morale building that went on in the last two or three months uh, going back to uh, late November. Look at where OSU football was mid-November on that losing streak. Uh, no quarterback. Uh, looks unwatchable, like, Barry. Looks like it was they're unwatchable. Losing season, the end of the bowl streak. Uh, and, and what's happened since then? The, uh, you know, Mason Rudolph emerged as a ball player. Uh, the winning the bedlam, winning the bowl game. Now, the, uh, you know, you, uh, you look at Oklahoma State football, see all the guys returning, see how the schedule plays out, see that Mason Rudolph's coming back. Mm -hmm. Uh, I knew that uh, OSU would be a, a Big 12 contender in 2015, but now it looks like nationally other people are recognizing, hey, this is, a, this is a, an elite program that's getting back quickly. And the truth of the matter is, Jenny, the, uh, the uh, Cowboys have, have set up a pretty good standard of where, you know, they're not, they're not a great team every year, but every other year yeah. they are a great team. In 2011 they were great. 2013 they should have won the Big 12. And now 2015 comes along, mm -hmm. uh, a contender again. Yeah, I think that this, uh, this spot for OSU is two things. One, it's a nod to how important quarterback play is and how much that can really project a team high into the conversation. What people saw out of Mason Rudolph, it was obviously fantastic to win Bedlam on the road after having a really good performance at Baylor a week before uh, or two weeks before, outstanding play, and then obviously going and winning the bowl game. That shows you just how much having a set quarterback in place is really a boom to you. Secondly, I would say that OSU's spot in these uh, projections is also a nod to a belief, and I, I think it'll grow as we go, a belief that a Big 12 team is likely to have a spot in the playoff next year. They were the one power conference shut out this last year, and uh, I think that a lot of people are probably, and I don't know if, it, I don't know if it's going to be conscious uh, unconscious decision, subconscious, however, whatever conscious you want to talk about. But I think a Big 12 team is likely to get in. Although I will say this, good quarterback play and a Big 12 team for sure getting in. TCU would definitely fit that spot for sure. The good news is the Frogs have to come to Stillwater. That's right. That's right. All right, finish <laughs> this one, Barry. College basketball in our state is? Interesting again. Uh, the Sooners are really good and playing interesting games. The uh, victory over Iowa State on Monday night was a throwback game, 94-83. So crying, much fun. For oh, crying man. out loud, that was, that was old school. That was Johnny Orr, Billy Tubbs stuff from the 80s. Uh, plus, the Cowboys uh, are not just competitive. They've gotten good. They're in the upper division of the Big 12. They're 7-5 and five in the conference. 
Uh, now, they're not playing any 94 to 83 games, but they're getting after it and playing defense and finding ways to win. So winning is always the preferred method of, uh, of style of play. So uh, I think both OU and OSU are headed to March Madness. OU with a high seed, and OSU, frankly, could still get a really good seed. You know, uh, at one point I thought if they make it, it'll be 12 or 13. They'll be playing in Dayton. Not necessarily. These Cowboys could have a very good seed. I'll say that college basketball in our state is fun. Uh, I had a chance to see the OSU win over Kansas in person, had a chance to see the OU win over Iowa State in person, and granted there's been some ups and downs for both of these teams, but even though they're winning different ways, OU with more of that, uh, I, you mentioned Billy Tubbs, he was there and he stuck around because he likes that kind of basketball uh, on Monday night. Uh, you know, 50-50 in the 1988 championship game at halftime. It was 46-46 the Close other enough. night. You don't see that very often. Fun, fun basketball. OSU obviously more of a grind style, but yet they're fun in a different way because you look out there sometimes and you're like, how are these guys? How are these guys beating Kansas? How are these guys beating Texas? And they just are finding ways to win. So it's fun to watch these teams right now. All right, our fun question of the week. Speaking of fun, how often have you found yourself singing downtown this week, Barry? Even though we're here in the podcast studio at the Tower on 9000 North Broadway, we've moved downtown. Yeah, and we're, you know the Oklahoma is moving back downtown. And uh, by the way, you carry a pretty good tune. I, that was I a try. good. I, uh, I was worried about uh, having to I'm not to Petula try... Clark, but... Well, I mean, no one ever is? said you were. Uh, yeah. But, uh, no, I, I've only sang it once all week, and that's when I was with you down there, and I pulled up the YouTube of Petula, Petula Clark Planet, and we sort of filled up the uh, new uh, the new digs with uh, with downtown. But, uh, no, it's fun. Well, it I mean, we're fun. fired up. We were there the, the first day on Monday, and it was a lot of fun, and uh, still not a lot of people down there joining us, but eventually everybody will get down there, and it'll be a lot of energy, and it was fun. We went to lunch and saw somebody we knew. Yeah. Uh, look out on the street, see all kinds of stuff. So we're going to have a great time, and uh, we have a good parking for the Thunder game. <laughs> you know, somebody said to me, we're, we're on the north side of the building in sports, and we've got windows right by us. And somebody said, yeah, but you've got the view of a parking garage across the street. I said, I don't really care. People going by, cars going by, stuff happening. And just being downtown, it's tons of fun. Uh, I, I'm really excited to, uh, to frankly, get back down there from standing here in the tower. So, uh, yeah, lots of downtown this week. All right, Barry, lastly, let's finish this sentence Thunder-related. Mitch McGarry's recent play is? Amazing. I mean, you're talking about a guy that really had, hadn't played, played, what, I think uh, something like uh, nine minutes all season, maybe uh, 13, I can't remember. Barely played, both in two games in blowouts. He's put into a position where he plays in two critical games, home game against the Clippers at Denver on back-to-back -back dates, and within literally within 35 hours, this, this guy, this rookie from Michigan, who is not expected to be in the rotation if healthy, posts two double-doubles. So uh, all of a sudden, it's a, bra it's a brave new world. Um, it gives the Thunder all kinds of options, both for the future, but also for immediately. You can't wait to get to the arena and see what Mitch McGarry is going to do now. I don't think he's going to keep up this double-double stuff. I don't think a, a backup power forward is going to average a double-double when he's playing behind uh, Ken, uh, when he's playing behind Serge Ibaka. Mm -hmm. But, man, it's going to be fun to watch him play, and he plays with such enthusiasm and fun. He's, he's just fun to watch. Yeah. Well, and I don't, I'm with you. I don't know if he keeps up the double-double streak or even close to what we're seeing right now. You know, maybe he's just running on adrenaline, frankly, finally getting out there. But I think his recent play is just what the Thunder needs in terms of that uh, enthusiasm. You know, these guys have sort of uh, had their lulls. We've talked about it repeatedly, just times when mentally, physically, they look like they're just not into it. I don't think there's going to be a single moment when Mitch McGarry's on the court that he's not into it. We saw him uh, become the best bench cheerleader the Thunder's had in quite a while. Well, guess what? That energy carries over when he's on the court. And, man, I think it might be uh, one of the things that the Thunder really needs to infuse that energy in them as they get ready to get uh, past the All-Star weekend and really try to make a run towards the playoffs. Hey, be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoma. <laughs>